So we're going to mark out the areas where there's volume loss over here for this patient. His scars in his temple destroyed a lot of his fat right here. So it destroyed some of his skin and also fat. How old are you, by the way? 25. 25, so really premature. You know, this is all just from acne scars in this case, not from age. So you can see where the scars destroyed so much of that fat and that volume here. So we're trying to get him back to how we would have looked without scarves. And then I'm also going to map out the area that I'm going to be doing more of the subcision, a little bit stronger with the laser. And it's important just to map it out because what I try to do is I try to do it along the bone right over here, the zygomatic process. Because the reason why is because if we go a little bit too low, with, especially with certain blades, then it can be a little bit riskier for patients. So we try to make sure that we're really in these safe zones over here. And then we marked out also the areas we're going to be taking out some of these scars. We're going to be doing something called an elliptical excision and then also punch excision. Can you smile again for me? So you can see in this case right over here, there's an area where there's a little bit of tension here. So in the future, we probably should want to do a little bit of Botox help to help relax that muscle so it doesn't cause much tension. And the same with this one over here. So if we do Botox in the crow's feet over here, that'll help prevent that pull. But you can see this one, for example, if we take that out, it's right along this line. So it should heal into a nice thinner linear scar. This page on this side over here as well. You can see the same process here. Big smile again. You can see where there's some tension for the scars. And that's what caused it to get a little bit longer like that. And so we're going to make it into a, a smaller scar by cutting it out. And then we're going to take out that scar as well. I need to relax again. Unless you want to smile. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start with the true CA part, a little bit of the acid here. I usually love using a paintbrush for TCA cross because it's really precise. I can get down to the base of each individual scar really nicely. But you'll notice that I don't just do the ice pick scars. Sometimes I'm doing back scar scars, I'm doing rolling scars. There's a way to do that to get a little bit of scar contraction if you do it in the inside wall. A lot of times though, I am doing it at the base of the scar so that over time, the scar will rise. There'll be more collagen production. The thing with PCA cross is you have to change the concentration depending on the depth of the scars. That's something that's really confusing to a lot of people. People think that you need a really high concentration of TCA. It's just not true. You could actually get really great results by mixing different concentrations depending on the depth of the scars. You'll notice throughout the entire time I'm using angle lighting to make sure it's really safe. What I'm using next is an ablative form of the CO2 laser. It's really similar to something called dermabrasion, but in this case, I'm using a laser to surgically smooth down the walls of the scar. You can see I'm being really precise as I'm doing it. I could change it down to one millimeter if I want, and I really try to get down to the base of the scar with a fine, high-powered laser like this works incredibly well, especially for patients where there's a lot of thickness around the edges of the scar. If their skin otherwise can tolerate it, they're the right skin type as well. This particular patient is Fitz Fitzpatrick 4, so it is a bit riskier, but we have to be really careful as we do it. You'll notice I'm not just doing it haphazardly, I'm really trying to stay focused and controlled on each individual raised portion of the scar. Sometimes what I also do though, is I try to get a bit of scar contraction with this laser as well. There is a way of actually closing certain kinds of scars with this laser. It works incredibly well for that as well. There's just certain ways of doing it. Sometimes you just sort of angle it and then you get the inside walls to contract. It works really well for that as well. But you'll notice right here what I'm doing is I'm really smoothing it down and I'll go over it and over it constantly to make sure it gets smoothed down as possible.
Next up, if you're watching me about to do subcision, this is a process that I do a ton, especially for these deep rolling scars. We're gonna really need to really break up these scars. You're gonna watch as I put a bunch of fluid in there, something called tumescent. It's a bunch of numbing solution in there. Everyone always asks, does it hurt? It doesn't hurt because of how much numbing solution we're placing in the patient. I find that you just, you wanna really stretch out the skin. It's gonna really help out with the scars. You'll notice right here, this is a blunt cannula. I'm actually just feeling and testing each of those big, thick scar walls. I'm trying to actually just break those up. There's a lot of areas where it is really tethered and you're gonna have to feel that with your cannula. I didn't mark out some areas that were particularly really stuck for this patient that are really being pulled down and we have to really meticulously break it down. I do find that by starting off with blunt cannula substitution and really doing most of my work with the blunt cannula, you could really be able to avoid adverse events and it could be really safe fit with that way. So you feel all the tension right now, right? Mm -hmm. You feel all the cracking? Yeah. So I'm gonna take out these scars now and then you'll see how smooth it is gonna be after that. Let's go with all this right here as we start to see how it is. It's in the same areas that we suspected that we gotta take out. See all that? So now we're gonna take out those scars and then we'll do this again, see how it is. Up next, what we're doing is punch excision. In this case, I'm using a circular tool to pull out the scar tissue. This is for a deep box scar scar, wide and deep. We have to pull out the scar individually. Sometimes what ends up happening is, is that these scars are so deep and so thick, we literally just have to take it out and then allow a new scar to form. Usually the new scar is gonna be more linear it's going to actually be more shallow over a matter of just a few weeks, really improving a lot of scar tissue. The challenge though is to do it in the right area. A lot of times I see people and they, play, they do these excisions in areas that may not heal appropriately. So if you look at this particular patient, we're doing it in spots that we know there's gonna be as minimal of tension as possible. We're closing up these big scars now, making sure that it's gonna be as small and undetectable as possible. And part of what we do for excision sometimes is something called the elliptical excision. This is where we make a wide scar into a more narrow scar by actually physically taking out that full scar in the inside portion of the wall, and then we make it into a smaller, thinner scar. Again, it has to be the right location, the right kind of scar though, to do this effectively. But it works really well for patients. This particular patient, he responded incredibly well from this. And you can see as we're doing this, we're really trying to make sure that there's as minimal tension as possible. Tension is really critical with scars, with the healing process of scars. So part of what we wanna do, besides the evaluation, besides making sure that we're cutting really well, we wanna make sure that when we're suturing it, that there's as minimal tension as possible. So that's partly what we're doing over here. And a lot of times we could collaborate this with other specialties, including plastic surgery, to ensure that you get a really beautiful result depending on the kind of scar you have. As we take out that scar though, you can see right here, we're really making sure then that the tension for the this, this scar after a suture is really gonna be really minimal. Typically what we wanna recommend doing is using something like silicone tape to really make sure that the scar remains flat. And each individual scar that we're cutting out like this, we've evaluated to make sure that there's really minimal amount of tension here. So you can see as we're doing this, we're cutting out this, just that scar portion. We're leaving the healthy tissue intact and then we're closing it so that it's a more linear scar afterwards.
This is something I really pride myself on and making sure that we could have multiple specialties over at our practice because we want to make sure that with a scar, we are going to be able to achieve the best possible aesthetic. And sometimes that requires not just energy devices, but it requires certain tools or certain expertise to make sure that the scar is going to be as minimal as possible. And I have no problem making sure that we could get all the tools and resources to be able to achieve that. It's really, really important for us to do that because I want to have it so that as the skin heals, we have a beautiful, beautiful result. I've been under a single session, that first combination session, I really want to make sure that we are getting a home run result. And we're going to make sure that these particular kinds of scars, the ones that we're really having to take out physically, really making sure that these are done really precisely, really, really meticulously. And that the end result is going to be something that not just the patient is going to be really happy and satisfied with, but all of us as a team are going to be really happy to see. And for sure, we were able to achieve that. Remember how tight it was before? Yeah. That was much smoother than that. See that? Crazy, right? It was the spots that we were suspected were really stuck there. Beautiful. Much better now. So now I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, bellifol in here. After we ended up doing the excisions, then what I ended up doing is just rechecking to make sure that there's no more tethered areas of the scar. And by taking out those big, thick scars, we found that there was actually really minimal tension. There's really minimal scar tissue left inside there. Next up, what I ended up doing is something called Bellifil. Bellifil is a really nice product, especially in the temple area, but it's really beautiful because what it ends up doing is over time stimulating collagen production. It's a very soft filler, but you still want to make sure that you're doing it in multiple different layers. You'll see that as I'm doing it, I'm not just shoving it in one spot, I'm constantly moving my cannula to make sure that it's done as safely as possible. It could work really well, but you have to be really precise, really meticulous as you do it. You never want to shove too much product, even in a certain layer, you're going to be doing multiple different layers. So I'm doing Bellifil over here in the temples, and then I do it also in the cheek area. Just carefully, just only certain areas. I want to make sure that we're paying attention to each patient's individual anatomy. We want to make sure that we're not changing the patient's natural face shape. We're trying to just enhance and improve their own tissue, their own structure. We're trying to actually repair the damage that occurred due to scarring. Of course, we could do things for facial balancing, but typically I save that, that for later. Done. I'm mostly initially the trying to just solve the issue uh, with, which occurred due time to time the scars, time due time. to the significant volume loss of the scars. That's what the whole point of this portion of things is. Really volume replacement in my mind is more for just repairing the damage of the scars. I don't want to adjust our natural anatomy. Now we're using more of the other energy devices. We're using a fraction of CO2 laser here, and we're doing that to help stimulate more collagen production to smooth down the scar walls a little bit more. You can see in this case, compared to the ablative form of the CO2 laser, now you can see that there's these gaps here. There's these little white areas and then there's this healthy tissue in the center. And the reason why is because we want it so that the skin can heal a little bit faster. There's no reason to destroy healthy tissue, especially a young patient like this. There's really no reason to do that. You'll see what we did was we actually stacked it. Initially it goes deep and then it goes superficial. That's really nice because we could allow even under a single pass to be able to hit multiple different layers of the skin and we could do it really safely, especially if you use the right settings. I know a lot of people will say, well, lasers won't work unless you use the maximum settings. I never go to the maximum setting. I'm actually very conservative with my settings with lasers, especially because a lot of my patients are patients of color and I have to be heartily careful with patients of color. We got to make sure that we're not overheating the skin. We're not causing pigmentation issues. And then what I do a lot of times is I top it off with a laser like this, which is a pro-fractional erbium laser. And you can see it's actually more superficial. So I like this because it's drilling in holes of the skin superficial. And because I didn't use too much heat and too much energy with the CO2 laser, I could go over those same areas now even more superficial 
and I could do it without much heat now with a proprational erbium laser. So that helps again for the, our patients who are of darker skin type. And then what I also use this laser for is just to give an overall blend. So that way there's no real lines of demarcation. I really don't like lines of demarcation with lasers. I think it's a little bit odd as it heals that there's a clear linear line sometimes where somebody goes really aggressive and then as the, the skin is healing, now that's, that area of the skin is really smooth, but the rest of the skin is not, it looks a little bit odd. So instead I try to make it so that everything is really tapered so that it's not overheated in one area. And then the rest of the skin looks a little bit more rough. So we wanna make sure that everything looks blended. People, when they look at your skin, they look at everything together. So everything really has to fit. So that's partly what I'd like to do, you know, for a lot of patients. There may be some areas where I'm going to go really light because there's not much scar tissue there, and that's fine. I don't want to overheat those areas for sure. But in other spots, it's important really just to go pretty strong, and, you know, where the scar tissue is to really make sure that we smooth it down effectively. It. Thank you so much. Thank you. We got everything. That's really, really good. I'll see you in about a month. Make sure your pigmentation's going okay. We can even put a little bit more Bellafold at that time probably too, okay? We have so much volume loss from your scars, unfortunately. We just had to keep that, uh, keep putting some more volume in there slowly, okay? Thank you so, so much. Part of what we also do though, is we then do something which I call laser assisted scar repair complex. Usually it's a blended form of either Sculptra or Redius um, or by itself, depending on what the, what's happening with the scars. So for this particular patient, we're using a really dilute form of Sculptra. We created all those tiny micro channels with the lasers, and now we're placing it through the laser channel holes. We're massaging it into the tissue. It works incredibly well over time to stimulate more collagen production. It's really going to help your results because that allowed us to not overheat the skin, and it made sure that over time your skin quality is going to get better and better. I love to be able to do from start to finish under a single session and get beautiful results. Thank you.